Where's that? There we go. There we go. Blast has been said. Be about it. Yes, exactly. Oh, look at that. Straight. Oh. If it's a heart, I don't have anyone else to kiss right now except myself. And it, and there's the heart. That's okay. I'll give Velvet a kiss later on for everyone. Probably better if I do that off camera anyway. So, all right. Yes, it is beer battered fish. Okay. It is um, beer battered uh, barramundi. Okay. Beer battered barramundi and onion rings. Okay. And I'm going to make everything from scratch and teach you guys how to do it on the way. How are you, Cade? Welcome to uh, Outback Tucker. But I'm really excited about what I'm about to cook. Okay, so I've preheated the oil. All right. Now, oh, it, it would change you if you don't like fish. This is an absolutely amazing dish. What I'm using is I'm using sunflower oil. Okay, because sunflower oil is a very, um, it's a, a very neutral flavored oil. It's not overbearing. Okay, and it's a really good oil. It, it gets to a um, a really good cooking heat. Perfect for beer battering things. So I've got sunflower oil there. Um, we are going to make our own tartare sauce as well. I'm going to teach you how to make mayonnaise and then convert the mayonnaise into tartare sauce. Thank you, Velvet. You're amazing. Okay. So I'm really excited about this. I'm also going to teach you how to make the beer batter. Okay. So it sounds like there's a lot and you're probably thinking, how is he going to do this in one hour? But I can guarantee you, I'm definitely going to be able to get this out in one hour. Okay. So, <laughs> um, all right. So I guess the first thing we're going to start with is the thing that's going to take the longest. Okay, is we're going to start with, um, well, first I'll show you the, the fish that we're going to cook. All right, so barramundi is an estuarine um, uh, sea bass white creature. Okay, this is one fillet of it right here. Okay, it's a white fish. Um, they grow quite large, okay, mainly up in northern Australia, but they get really, really large. Um, there's actually a competition every year up in Darwin. And that, and they'll they'll actually tag uh, some barramundi, and they'll release them in the wild. And I think there's about ten of them that are worth ten thousand dollars if you catch them with a tag. And there's one worth one million dollars. Okay, it's called the million dollar barra. So all all the barramundi fishermen every year will go out trying to get this one barramundi that's tagged with a million dollars on it. So that's a that's a cool pack. I've actually li lived up in Darwin and. and I've never met anyone that's won the million dollars, but I've met a couple of people that have gotten $10,000 for catching one of these. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the back. Okay, it has been scaled. Um, I'm, I'm gonna leave the skin on. Well, actually, it's kind of a, a thick, fatty layer. I might actually cut that off. Yeah, I'm gonna cut the skin off, okay? It doesn't have the scales on it, but it's very thick, it's very fatty. I don't want it to ruin the taste of the of the be about a fish so that's what that looks like there okay so i'm just going to put that away for now and we're going to get on with making our mayonnaise okay so to make mayonnaise well to make tartare sauce okay we've got a selection of ingredients right here we're actually i'm going to, I'm going to put the guest box in I'm going to put the guest box in so that you guys can see what I'm doing off to this side of the stream. All right. All right. Let's put the guest box in. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to have to turn that around again. Around. How are we looking there? There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so here we go. What we've got for the tartare sauce. Okay, we've got six egg yolks. Okay, we're going to um, mix that with, again, sunflower oil because sunflower oil is a very good oil to use, um, very neutral flavored. We're going to use that for our mayonnaise. Okay, once the mayonnaise is made, we're going to add. We've got gherkins, okay, or pickle, you can use either one. 
we've got capers, all, all finely chopped. Okay, we've got lime zest. Okay, and we've got finely two cloves of finely chopped garlic. Okay, and we've got red onion finely chopped as well. And that's what we're going to use to make our tartare sauce. Okay, so guys, um, for those that have joined recently that are just lurking, I am the O. Okay, this is Outback Tucker with the O. Today we are making beer battered barramundi and onion rings. Okay, and I'm going to teach you how to make absolutely everything in the in the ingredients. All right, so we're going to start off in our mixing bowl. We've got six egg yolks. Now, guys, when you're making uh, mayonnaise, okay, you can use the whole egg. I tend not to. So you can fold the uh, the white back through because it's very oily. You can fold it back through the um, the actual yolk and it'll make mayonnaise. But I don't do that. I use oil. Okay, so in, in we go with our six uh, six egg yolks into the bowl. Okay, now you can use either lemon juice or vinegar. I think this time I'm going to use a, a, a lemon juice. So I'll probably use about half half a lemon. that in there. You can use vinegar as well. I'd recommend apple apple cider vinegar. There we go. That's half a lemon. They're all wedges. Okay. We're going to whisk, twist that together. Oh, wait, wait. We need to add one uh, tablespoon of Dijon mustard. There we go. And we're going to mix those three ingredients together. So we got six egg yolks, we got a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and the juice of half a lemon. Okay, so we'll mix them together first. You don't have to go too crazy on it, just enough so that they all stick together. Just something like that. Just you know, so you put all the all the flavors together. It's just like that. Okay, now if you can do it on your own, that's fine. But I can't, so I'm actually going to recruit Velvet to help me with this bit. What you want to do is you want to slow, slowly drizzle the um, sunflower oil into the bowl while you 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 frantically mix it. So I'll get you to come over this side. Now this takes a bit of um, elbow grease. Thank you, Velvet. Okay, start pouring. There we go. See, the thing is, if you add too much oil too quickly, it's going to split and you're going to end up with this oily, eggy mess everywhere. And you don't want that. Okay, a little bit more. Keep going. Keep going. Good workout. Okay, if, if you feel like you're adding it too quickly, you just stop the oil being poured in, give it a, a good whisk. Okay, and start going again. Thank you, Velvet. And stop. I um I was doing some laboring yesterday, so my shoulders are already sore, but I'm gonna I'm gonna power through. Okay, okay, let's keep going. Okay. 
Good job. I am going. It's just I don't want to put it too much, so sometimes it accidentally stops. Okay, that'll do. All right, so what we want now, I need velvet to go get some boiling water. Okay, so this is what's going to give it the uh, the white. Yes, I am in my own box, just, just so I can show you what I'm actually doing. And what we're cooking. Well, yeah. what he's cooking and I'm assisting. So we're actually, uh, Jared, right now we're actually making mayonnaise. Okay, and we're going to use the mayonnaise to make our own tartare sauce to go with our meal. This is Outback Tucker with the O. Yes, this is Outback <laughs> Tucker with the O. This happens this time every week on a Sunday, 5 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so today we are making barramundi, uh, beer battered barramundi with um, onion rings. Okay, and our own homemade tartare sauce. Okay, so I'm teaching you how to make the tartare sauce and also the beer batter as well. So I just need that hot water. The hot water, so yeah. So boiling water. Sure, you can uh, rinse this off for me as well. Oh, actually, no, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. I know. Making velvet run around like a mad woman right now. So, all right, for those who have just come in, okay, this is our back tucker with the O. Okay, we are making beer battered, beer battered uh, barramundi fillets, and we are making our own homemade tartare sauce with these ingredients. So there's a finely diced Spanish or red onion. We got finely diced gherkin. We have got finely diced capers, the zest of one lime, and two cloves of finely crushed garlic. Okay, this is gonna be amazing. Whew. Wrists are a bit sore after that one. So I'll show you guys the barramundi fillets again. Okay, these are an absolute dream of a fish. Okay, oh, thank you, Velvet. I choo choo choose you. I got I choo choo choose you. <laughs> so there you go, that's a barramundi fillet. Okay, I'm gonna actually cut the skin off because it's a bit fatty looking and I don't want it to destroy my um, fear about it, fish and chips. I'm gonna put the kettle over here because I don't want the heat to break the glass table okay. or ruin the integrity so of any of the We've got boiling hot water, okay? You only need a couple of tablespoons of this. Just like that. And that's going to give it that white appearance. Cow. <laughs> My main boss man. Okay. So that's six egg yolks in there, guys. You have to rapidly whisk it so that it doesn't split. Hey, Melanie, how are you? Welcome to Outback Piker with the O. Oh, dear. oh wow. Right, yeah. That is our mayonnaise. Here we go. I'm doing well. I'm tired now after whisking all of that. Okay, so I'm making my own um, tartare sauce right now to go with our beer battered barramundi and onion rings. So this is everything that's going to be going in the tartar sauce. Right, yeah. So yeah, so we have made our mayonnaise. Okay, so that's six egg yolks. Um, you finally drizzle in some sunflower oil until it thickens up and two tablespoons of boiling water to make it white. Okay, well, there's one tablespoon of Dijon mustard in there and the juice of half of a lemon. Okay, so that's what we've covered so far. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add these ingredients to turn it into tartare sauce. Okay, so everyone knows that my my, sta my staple favorite ingredient is smoked paprika. So I'm just going to salt bay a little pinch in there. 
There we go. That's going to give it a nice um, color as well. All right. So we have got finely diced Spanish onion. Okay. Finely diced gherkin. Um, finely diced capers. The um, zest of one lime. And three, uh, two, cloves, two large cloves of garlic finely diced. Okay, so we can we can put them all in there together. Okay. I'm gonna add the ju juice of that half lemon as well, or half wine. Why not? It's there. So if you feel like your mayonnaise is too thick, thin, don't worry about that because now you've just added all these uh, solids and it should turn it out quite nicely. There we go. And there we go, there's our um, homemade tartare sauce, see that? Do you really keep stirring that? No, no, it's okay. It is a little bit runny, but that's okay. It only has to stick to the fish, so. <laughs> uh, get a tea towel. I'll wash my hands. Okay, so there we go. We have got our tartare sauce ready. Did you want me to refrigerate it? No, it's okay. I'm just going to pour it straight into this little bowl. I feel like it should be refrigerated. All right, yeah, you can go put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so that. Oh, a little bit. That is off to the side right there. All right, next thing we're going to do beer batter. Okay, you can't have beer batter fish and chips without beer batter. All right. So for this, all you need is plain flour. Okay. Um, I'm sure I brought it out somewhere. No, I must have left it inside. And beer. That's it. You need plain flour and beer. That's it. Only two ingredients for this. Velvet, can you bring out the flour? Okay. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to pour the beer in first and add the flour to the beer. Okay. So I'm just going to start off with one can. So that's 375 mils. Okay. Guys, and for anyone who's just joining, I'm the O. This is Outback Tucker with the O. Same time every week, 5 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, Melanie. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, on a so yes, yeah, so a Sunday, 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, Outback Tucker with the O. I'll always send a blast to let you know that I'm on. Okay, thanks, Melanie. Oh, hang on. I forgot to do something with you earlier. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay, we have got the plain flour now. So I've put 375 mils of beer into that bowl. We've got our plain flour. <laughs> It doesn't matter if it comes out um, plumpy because you're going to whisk it anyway. All right. You can use self-raising flour as well, um, but it, it really doesn't bother me. Plain flour is just as good. So you want to kind of get it to a consistency, kind of like paste. The O's beer batter has always been amazing. So I use plain flour over self-raising flour just because that's what the O does. <laughs> so yeah, you kind of want it like the consistency of cake mix. <clears throat> I don't think, well, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough for uh, what we're trying to do here today. I might just add another can. Okay, so one more can. So that's now all right, about half the can. You don't want to use too much. That's the thing. I'm trying to reduce wastage. Okay, I want to, I'm trying to teach you guys how to make these things, but also do it economically as well. You can always test, okay? You can test by dipping your finger in it, okay? That is too thin. You want it to sort of coat your finger and that, not drip off. Hey, 
Hey, Dwayne. There we go. That's looking about right. See that? How, welcome to Outback Tucker with the O, Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, Maria. Maria, I am making beer battered uh, barramundi fillets with um, onion rings and our own homemade tartare sauce as well. There we go. All right, I think that's probably about enough. We're going to put that off to the side right now. What we're also looking for with our regulars in this stream is our feedback uh, on what angles you find are best. Out of all of the streams you've been viewing, what angles do you think have worked really well and what angles haven't worked well? Please give us feedback on that. All right, so we've got our tartare sauce. We've got our beer batter now. And that's, that's all the hard work done, okay? Now, I'm going to take the skin off of these fillets and I'm going to cut them into the right size as well. So as you can see... I might drop this guest box in here. They usually come in, in rather large fillets, okay? This one still has the skin on, but for the purpose of this meal, okay, I'm going to cut the skin off. It, it doesn't have its um, the scales on it, but it seems to be a little bit fatty, and then I don't want it, that to wreck the, the dish. So I'm just going to get my filleting knife. Now, when, you, when you're taking the skin off a of fish, guys, what you want to do is angle the knife up towards the skin. That knife, knife isn't sharp enough, so I'll use the one that is. Okay. If you angle it in towards the meat, you're going to cut off portions of the meat. That's right. It's kind of hard because it goes thinner as you get to the bottom of it. Done really well though with getting most of that skin off. And he hasn't taken huge chunks of the fish out. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Look at that. Wrong side, the guest box will be covered. Oh, sorry. Like that. <laughs> Give him time to get used to the opposites with the guest box. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do, can you guys, okay, so that fillet is that big now. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have, you want to try and make it even. Okay, so. We're going to have a thicker side at the bottom. We're going to cut it through the middle on an angle like that. Just like that. Okay, so that will now give us two fillets to serve with. Okay. And they've both got pretty even thickness yeah. too. Okay, and that's, that's all you need to do. All right, so we'll do that to the other one as well. Put that one back in its protective case. Okay, because... This is Australian, we do have a lot of flies. You'll see them sometimes covering your camera. Yeah. <laughs> so. There we go. I ripped a little bit of that one off. I felt that, that up a bit, but that's it. No, not to fill the total. Okay. I'm going to do a little test cook with this one. one. I was going to do a, a little test cook no. here. Still a bit of skill, mate. All right. So this is just going to make sure that the oil is hot enough. I dare say it will be. All right, so we're gonna we're just gonna coat the piece of fish in the flour, okay, and then dunk it into our beer batter. Okay, let it drain off, and then into the fryer. Okay. Oh, that sounds perfect. Just wave it through there like that. We need our tongs. There they are. Do you need a plate? Um, no, not just yet. While that's cooking, I'm going to cut up the um, onions. So we're going to have onion rings that go with the barramundi. Okay. Guys, also for anyone who's just joined, this is Outback Tucker with the O. Okay. We are making barramundi, uh, beer battered barramundi and onion rings with our own homemade tartare sauce as well. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
but they can be the little ones ones. That's right. <laughs> So that's actually, yeah, that's probably actually the perfect serving for the size of our family today anyway. So yeah. Um, all right, let's go with the onion rings. So I'm going to skin this onion here. Oh my God, the Labrador likes pickles. The Labrador likes everything. Mm -hmm. Except lettuce. Have you, have yes, you ever tried to feed him lettuce? Yes, I have. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Oh my god, he ate it. All right. <laughs> Now, the beer batter is going to come out very thick, okay? So you don't need to cut the onion into thick uh, circles. I'd say about half an inch. I'm actually give you a decent amount. Okay. Would you like me to pop those out for you once you get there? No, no, it's okay. I'll just take a second. Just like that. So you're looking for something about that big, okay? Something like that, all right? Hey, JC, how are you? Welcome to Outback Tucker with the O. All right, guys, so same time every week, five o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time or Sydney time. Okay, there's always going to be something uh, awesome to cook. All right, now let's take a look at our test piece of um, beer battered fish. I like to flip it over just before I take it out because the underside can, can then get cooked as well. It is looking okay. beautiful. Yeah, it is. Well, I'm using I'm using fresh oil. Okay, I I don't believe in using it over and over and over again. Maybe five times is the maximum because and you can tell because the oil is going to start going kind of a darkish color. All right, but this is fresh. Okay, now look at that. That's one piece. Ooh, one piece of beer battered fish and chips. That's the test piece to make sure that it's hot enough to cook in. I'm really happy with that. Um, with that result, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna cut a piece of it, cut into it now, and let it cool. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Look at that. No, so look at that. That is that is beautiful and moist. Yep. That's going to be amazing. I want to try some with your sauce. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's still a bit hot. I'm going to burn velvet. So that's what we're up to. Okay, that is pretty much the entire dish right there. Um, does anyone have any questions about what we've covered so far? We've made our own mayonnaise. We have turned that into tartare sauce. Hey Jacob, how are you? Welcome to Outback Tucker with the O. Hi Jacob. Okay, so we've made our own mayonnaise, turned that into tartare sauce. We've made our own beer batter and we've prepared the, the fish to be deep fried with the beer batter that we made. Okay, all that in half an hour. All right, so we're doing very well for time. So there is time for questions, you know, things like that. Mm. I might have a bit of a go myself. It's going well. Oh, wow. That's good. Mm, you got home from basketball training. So you've gone out and done something athletic and now you're watching us eat deep fried food. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Mm. It's our beer batter platter. <laughs> but wow, that barramundi, barramundi is an amazing uh, fish to cook beer battered. Okay, so it's not a purely salt water fish. It's not fresh water, it's called estuarine. Okay, it's also known as the uh, Asian sea bass. Okay, but we call it barramundi. It's a very strange looking shit, uh, fish. It looks like a, um, <laughs> it looks like, um, like an A330 A aircraft. Like it's got this long snout sort of thing and it's got this massive forehead. Jacob would know what a barramundi looks like. But yeah, that's what we're having today. That's what our dog's also enjoying the skin of in the background. You can't see her at the moment because mm. Zero's in the way. Pop out of the mm. way and let yep. them, look at her. They, they love it. Every time I come out here to do a cooking stream, they know exactly where to position themselves. <laughs> All right, let's get, um, we'll get this, this dish out of here. 
the Labrador wants this pickle. Are we mm -hmm. going to need any more of that? Yeah. Actually, I might add that. Um, oh, no, I'm off to the side here. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it is. It is amazing. We've got the oil at a perfect temperature, Jacob. So we're using sunflower oil because it's a, it's a, a neutral tasting oil. It's not overbearing. It, it gets to a really good heating point. Okay, so it's perfect for doing beer batter in. Let's um, let's I'll show you guys what an onion ring how that goes. So same story with an onion ring, coat it in the plain flour. Okay, just dunk it into your beer batter like that. Let the excess drip off, and then into the fryer. Look at that. It is bubbling away beautifully. I've got that at the exact right temperature. Yeah, this is going to be great. Look at that. It's all the bubble. It's like it looks like a little floating jacuzzi in there. There's like this onion ring with all these bubbles coming up out of nowhere. Absolutely incredible. Now, the only problem with doing this on the barbecue and with a pot is that I'm, I'm not going to be able to fit too much in there at one time. Otherwise, it's all going to stick together and um, it's going to come out as this one deep fried mess and I'm not going to be able to plate it up appropriately. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the burners on because we're only using the um, the um, the stovetop burner on the end of the barbecue. Okay, so I've actually I've cleaned. I, I spent like an hour today cleaning my barbecue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, turn on some of the bar burners and put in everything on this, on the um, the grill bit, which I've cleaned off. Okay, so that way it'll at least keep it warm and won't let it go soggy while it's while it's waiting. Now let's just uh, turn that onion ring over. I can't even tell you how hot this oil is right now, but it's doing an amazing job. So I'm just going to turn this. This burn down here. Ooh, on. I can't wait to try the onion ring. <clears throat> Let me put that one down low. That's just going to give us some heat in case I need to use the rack to keep things warm. Right. I just I just want to take a moment for everyone to um appreciate Zero's barbecue skills. He is the only man I've let use my barbecue that I haven't felt the need to jump in and take control over. <laughs> so there we go. Look at that. That is one perfectly cooked onion ring. Okay. You couldn't get better than that at, at Hungry Jack's. Okay. And they mass commercially produce these things. So yeah. Right. Let that cool down. We'll let bit. that cool down. Um, all right. So we've got 25 minutes to go. I'm going to start getting, um, getting serious now getting what we're going to plate up, how I'm going to plate it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to serve my deep fried barramundi with about three, three onion rings. Okay, so I want the, the largest ones I've got. Or maybe, no, I'll get, let's go with five. I feel like the Olympics. Look at that. Looks like the Aldi symbol. <laughs> You'll take the onion rings over the fish, I reckon. Boy, the onion rings are amazing. They taste great. Okay. So I could probably get away with doing the onion rings um, all together. All right, let's do that. So I'm just coating them right now with the flour. Okay. And one by one, they go into the batter. Let the excess drip off, excess drip off, and into the fryer. Nice yeah, Mel's not a, a fan of fish. I know that. I've learned that today about Mel. Same with this bit. Mystic's not a, a fan of fish. There we go. There's still half onion rings. Okay. So there we go. We've got five onion rings in the fryer right now. Mm. 
They are perfect. For anyone who's lurking and hasn't commented, okay, this is our back taco with the O, five o'clock Sydney time every Sunday. Mm. So that's Australian Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes it's daylight savings time. It's a bit confusing. That's why we say Sydney time. Mm. Those onion rings are fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> They've got kind of a sweet taste to them. Mm. Let me refrigerate. Go, go get the other one out of the out of the um fridge. Yeah. Yeah. So you want them just to go golden brown. I flip them over so that the underside cooks as well. Oh, thank you, Velvet. There we go. They're almost ready. Okay. Now what we might do is go one big piece and one little piece of fish for plating. Okay. You can do a little salad with it if you like. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little tiny side salad. You don't expect people to eat it, but it makes it look pretty. Okay, and then you've got your onion rings. So they look about right. I'm just going to put them up there on the um, on the rack. So five onion rings. And now we do the same thing with the, the fish. Quite a thick piece of fish as well. Okay, we'll throw that in the beer batter. The better gets thicker, the more uh, the more you keep cook uh, dunk in it. Okay, so here comes one big piece of, of fish. Okay, all the excess is gone. Go back and forth like this. this is a really big piece of fish, actually. I hope it doesn't stick to the side. Okay. Oh. Who is that? Oh, thank you, Melanie. Melanie, hey, I've thank never seen those so ones much. before. Those are little candies. There we go. Hmm. Oh, penny hearts, and I got I choo choo choose you. Hey, dice roller, welcome to Outback Tucker with the O. We are making beer battered barramundi with onion rings today. Okay. This happens. Oh my gosh, I clean this for your plating plate. No, no, I've got the plating plate over there. Oh. <laughs> this happens at five o'clock um, Australian Eastern Standard Time every Sunday. Oh, thank you so much, there Jacob. Yeah, you're amazing. Thank you so much. 10K hearts, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, guys. Make sure you hit that favorite. Okay, if you haven't already. Okay, I know most of the bouncers have, hopefully. Um, <laughs> And also my Instagram is on my pro my uh, profile. The link to it is on my profile. So if you want to follow this recipe on um, Instagram, you're more than welcome to. Thank you, Velvet. You're amazing. Thank you for those roses. There we go. Wow, that's cooking so well. All right, so let me get the plate plate out. What we're going to do, we'll make a little a little garnish salad to go with it. I'm just going to use some baby spinach. Right in the middle of the plate. Thank you so much, Dice Roller. There we go. Thank you, Dice Roller. You're amazing. Yes, definitely beer for beer, battered <coughs> fish and chips. All right. Put that over there. 
we will get a cucumber provided by our daughter's friend. There we go. We will get one tomato. And I've got a little bit of leftover Spanish onion from our um, tartare sauce that we made, so I might as well use that too, eh? Yeah. We've got a lemon, because everyone loves to have lemon with their, uh, with their fish and chips. I should probably take the sticker off. Can you imagine that, that being someone's job back in the day, before they had machinery? There was, it was someone's job to stick stickers on fruit and vegetables. You want to know a fun fact about those stickers? Yeah. They are edible. What? Yeah. Well, they'd have to be in case you swallowed one. Look at that. So plating up, it's starting to look beautiful. Let's turn our fish over. Oh, that fish is looking amazing. Yeah. Not too much like it's actually good to put it on this rack too because it's letting all the excess um, oil drip off as well. You don't want to have a, a, a puddle of oil on your plate, okay? You're going to look like a complete asshole if you let that happen. <laughs> And the thing, okay, so you don't want the beer batter to be too thick because what will happen is you'll cook the outside beer batter and it won't, the heat won't get in to cook the fish. So you'll have this perfectly cooked beer batter, but you'll have like sushi on the inside. So you don't want that. You're going to have a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll have perfectly cooked fish and burnt batter. Exactly. So that's looking about right. So we sit that up on that rack, hey? Yeah, we'll sit that up on the rack there. I've got to do this four more times because there's children inside for after the stream. So I'm just going to leave everything going. We're going to have beer, homemade beer battered fish and chips tonight. I might actually give that a little bit longer because it is quite a thick piece of fish. You don't want to undercook it. Thank you. And just like that, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. And this is Outback Tucker with the O. Five o'clock every Sunday, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Okay, all of the um, things that I cook, you can find them on my Instagram. What's in the batter? Okay, so dice roller. It is two ingredients. There is beer. I use always use a lager, and there is plain flour. That's the only thing. That's all you need. Thank you, Velvet. You're amazing. Okay. If you haven't already figured out, it is a family member who is gifting on my account. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. It's, where's my phone being? Well, I know, that's what I sound like. It's the ghost of Velvet gifting me because she's out here with me helping me cook stuff. Like, who's pushing those buttons? No, I, I converted <laughs> yeah. some of our credits. So, this is a dice roller, this is what it looks like. This is the, the finished product, okay? Like, it looks like something you'd get in the pub. It does. It looks amazing. Okay. So, I'm going to put them up on the rack. I've used one smallish piece and one big piece. So, um, Dice Roller, I don't know if you're from Australia. Um, yeah, I did a perfect job. Look at that. I don't know if you're from Australia or not or know what Barramundi like is. It does. It looks like Italy. <laughs> I was it's, say it's, it's Italy. Well, like South America. Look at that. No, it's in the game. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Dice Roller, you're from Darwin. You know all about Barramundi. I was just telling the stream about um, the yearly competition, the Million Dollar Barra. Have you ever have you ever taken part in that? Or? You know, like, do you go barra fishing? I would if I was still up in Darwin. <laughs> we also cooked crocodile on the stream. Yeah, we, we cooked crocodile kebabs, and they were amazing. You, oh, you see the winners. Okay. I've only ever met anyone who's gotten a $10,000 barrel. 
we would love to have one of the winners get into the guest box in a stream if you know them. So we'll put that next time we cook some barra. Look at that. As if as if that is not oh not exactly like what you would get. Oh my god, he almost dropped oh, it. Oh no, I almost dropped it. That was almost very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, give me a chef tip. Absolutely. I'm always open to tips. Look at that. A teaspoon of, I was thinking that. Do you add baking powder to it to make it extra fluffy? Um, and then I thought, well, I should, but I'm not sure. I'm not actually a qualified chef, but thank, thank you very much. I will do that next time, definitely. Um, oh, hang on. Now we've got our homemade tartare sauce, which is a bit runny, but that's okay. Actually, anyway, that's what we'll do. Just give me one sec, guys. How amazing. Is this food looking? So this is our homemade part here sauce. I'm just I'm I'm really pedantic about making sure that everything looks right. Okay, so I want to get any drippings off the side there. Okay. So we've got homemade tart hair sauce. Oh, look, he's making it pretty. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's exactly. It's a bit windy. <laughs> I think that looks perfect in the bin. Yeah. Okay, and we are going to remove the guest box now so I can take pictures. See that? What do you reckon? Winner, winner, uh, Barramundi dinner, that's right. <laughs> winner, winner, Barra dinner. Dice Roller, you've been amazing. Oh, I've already got your favorite. Awesome. There we go. So we're hoping that's what a, a good job for, for our door. I know. <laughs> oh, a good job for our door. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Okay, so our back tucker with the O has to be done on a barbecue or a fire pit. Oh, thank you. And just like that, you're amazing. Yeah, so I can't go inside and use, use our family kitchen. Okay, otherwise it wouldn't be our back tucker with the O. That's right. So yeah, they're the only two things I can use is my barbecue or my fire pit. You should. I I I don't know if you were in our um our crocodile kebab stream, but they turned out absolutely sensational. Like, I was worried because I've only ever had croc sausages and I wasn't a fan. Okay, but the, these tasted absolutely fantastic. Oh, look at how perfect! Here we go. I've just broken that open. You can see the juice inside it still, but it's perfectly. Yeah, cooked. it's not dry. It's not dry, so now I get to do it four more times for the kids <laughs> in 10 minutes after the stream ends. So Dice Roller, this is um hopefully going to be my featured stream or my featured show, you know about featured shows. Mm. Okay. So I put in my uh, submissions. They like what I do. They put it to the design team now. And hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to do this like, you know, with the confidence that it's my own featured show. That should be a featured show. Who can produce something like that in one hour from scratch? Yeah, I know. So we made our, our own tartare sauce. We made our own beer batter. And we plated a, an entire meal for one person. Right and there. our own onion rings. And our own onion rings. That's right. So I only try to use Australian um, meats and proteins. So kangaroo, crocodile. I've got emu on order. Dice roller, have you ever had emu? Has anyone ever had crocodile? Like all these exotic meats, like, you know, and people love seeing how we actually prepare them and how we eat them. And as I said, I'm not a qualified chef, all right? But I have worked in kitchens. You know, actually, um, I'm trying I swear to, he was a qualified chef in a past life. I'm trying to get my old head chef in. They have, yes, yes, that is true. They do reach out to you. You'll just, you'll like, if you start doing a featured show, there's always a lurker that hangs around. Okay. And they will be working for it. They'll be part of the talent scouts. They'll let the content managers know and the content managers will come in and then you'll get a message and they'll say, um, you know, we wanted to talk to you, you know, obviously you like what you do and you're good at it. 
um, we wanted to know if you wanted a featured stream and they'll run you through it and the process, you have a little meeting with them. It's, yeah. You had croc once as well. Yeah, crocodile is really good. Okay, so Australian saltwater crocodile. Okay, that's like a, it, it's like a taste between um, fish and, uh, sorry, chicken and calamari, I reckon. Mm. They always say that anything that isn't normal tastes like chicken, but this actually does. But it's like chicken with calamari. It's got that really sort of gooey, gooey texture like, uh, you know, calamari does when it's not overcooked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And it's kind of sweet as well because it is a uh, saltwater creature. It's really good. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week. Hopefully they've got the emu steaks in. I really want to do these emu steaks, but failing that, I'm going to go with wild rabbit, whole wild rabbit, and I think I might do it on the fire pit. Mm. Yes, please. Look, I've Robert, never tried getting rabbit. Into it. Oh, yeah, I can't wait until the stream's over. <laughs> He's amazing. Okay, so gator meat, gator meat uh, isn't, gator meat is more of a, um, a chickeny sort of taste, whereas crocodile is more chicken fish flavored. I, I don't know why. But yeah, and you've never had it. Okay, all right. Yeah, so you got to try it though. You know, if they do it right and they marinate it with the right thing, so I use lemon, ginger, and garlic. Like, uh, sorry, lime, ginger, and garlic. It will taste 100%. Fantastic. You won't regret it. Okay. It yeah. goes very well with, with um, acidic foods. You seem to just be able to pair these foods really well together and know how to cook them. Let's have a go. Mm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful flavoured fish. And it's not overcooked. You got this barra from Casanova Seafood? Yeah. Mm. I only shop locally. Um, all of our meats come from our local um, wholesaler just down the road. Right next to the wholesaler is the um, Fruit for All Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Market. I, I promote them. I won't go to a supermarket unless I have to. Oh, thank you, Velvet. You're amazing. Look at that. So, um, oh, big kisses. Thank you. Look, Velvet's here. It's not Velvet. Okay. It's, it's the not ghost. me. It is the ghost of Velvet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'll, I'll only support local businesses and that. I'm starting to get a name. Like, I'll go in there to buy something and they'll, they'll know that I'm the streamer because we post it on our, um, on our Facebook page. Oh, thank you, Velvet. Wow. Look at that. And, um, yeah, and, and I'll go in there to buy something for the stream and they'll be like, hey, you're that, that streamer guy. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's right. So, yeah, and you guys have been fantastic. I, I, I want to thank you all so much for your support, being there, asking the questions. You know, I love to give some feedback. I love criticism, guys. So, yeah. Please that's, make that's sure fantastic. you come back next week. And remember... Purchase your ingredients from your local local supermarket, yeah. not supermarket, sorry, your local businesses, your small businesses. Um, we find our meats, our seafoods are so much better when they're bought from someone who's oh, bought them Oh, you guys, cells. thank you so much. You're going to make me you blush. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to make me blush. You're going to make me blush because that was a really fun stream. I'm, I got the product that I wanted out of it, okay? Um, oh, it tastes amazing. Look, I'm going back in time here. I'm going back about 19 years since the last time I made that in a in a you know industrial kitchen. So it's good to have that knowledge. Keep um, an eye out on the Instagram. Yeah, we'll definitely be posting up about it on Instagram. We'll be tagging in the local businesses that supplied me with everything to make these foods. Okay. Catfish bat. Okay, so well, what we just made is barramundi, and barramundi is also known as Asian sea bass. Okay. And it's, um, even though it's not a, a sea creature, it's estuarine. It's half freshwater, half saltwater. Um, but yeah, it, it tastes, it's, it's, it's got a little bit of a muddy, but a little bit of a sweet taste to it. Um, and it goes paired really well, obviously, with onion rings and um, it tart tastes, hair sauce. It tastes like camping. It tastes like camping, according to Velvet. Yeah, so it'd probably be very similar to um, catfish. Hey, boo blue, boo blue. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the best way I can say it tastes. It does. If yeah. you were to if you were to close your eyes, take a bite and imagine that you're sitting around a campfire, you'd be taken there. Yeah. So no, that was that was really good. Um, we got it all out in in time. Um, it took me about twice as long to prepare for it as it did to actually get this one hour stream out. So it took me about two hours of preparation first, but I really don't mind. You don't know English? Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Just, you know, hang out in the comments. You're more than welcome to watch. We are coming to the end of the stream though, guys, and I will be back at the same time next week, five o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so that's Sydney time for more Outback uh, Tucker with the O. Okay, you, you're coming from India. Okay, awesome. Oh, well, you should see how I'm going to do my goat curry. That's another one I've got to do. Okay, I will only be cooking on either my barbecue or my fire pit. Okay. Yes. So, um, but thank you everyone for being here. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for the favorites. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for asking the questions, giving the feedback. That's exactly what I want in my um in my featured show when it when it starts. So. Oh no, that's. No, 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 no. We, we stream all the time. Okay. Usually we're on the Velvet account. This is where I do my, I, I really only do my, um, I do my morning shows, but usually guaranteed every Sunday at five Australian Eastern Standard Time, you'll find me cooking something. And I'll always send out a blast saying Outback Tucker with the O is on now. So yeah. Oh, thank you, Boobly. You're amazing. See, love the comments, guys. Love the support. I feel the love. It's great. Yeah. Now I've got to clean up this mess. So oh, is, there anything, is there anything you change about the dish that you cooked tonight? Um, I probably, I'm going to work on my mayonnaise making skills because I don't like it being so liquidy. Well, it does need to be refrigerated. Yeah, I know. Well, mayonnaise traditionally is quite thick, like yogurt. Mine came out a little bit thin, but that's okay. You know, it's still got all the flavors. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's, awesome. that's pretty much what I was thinking as well, the thickness of the mayonnaise, otherwise everything was perfect. Well, okay, I've never had rabbit before, guys, and I'm wondering what flavor would go well with rabbit. Like, I'm thinking if I'm going to do it I feel the... like a rosemary. I feel like you should cook rabbit like you would lamb. Yeah, I'm thinking more Texan barbecue style. I'm thinking like, you know, like a, like a, a, a Texan barbecue sauce. You know, if we're going to do it on the open fire pit, it's going to get this wood. I might even get some wood chips, like some apple, Ooh. cherry, cherry, apple, cherry, apple wood or whatever it is, wood chips. Um, make a really nice marinade for it and just slather it on and sort of slow cook it on the, um, on the fire pit there and then so serve it up with some seasonal vegetables. I don't know. It depends on what, what people describe the flavor of rabbit like, you know, if it's anything like, um, ribs, it would be perfect. So, um, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, guys, um, thank you very much once again for um, supporting the stream. Okay, I am the O. Okay, and this is the conclusion of Outback Tucker with the O, and we'll be back again same time next week, 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time or Sydney time, and hopefully we can be doing some rabbit. Thank you very much, guys. Love you all. Much love. Thank you.